2019 Lamborghini Year's First Look Sand Cladding. More info on Lamborghini's new SUV. Lamborghini reveals more about the new Urus. We have already taken a spin in a cladded up prototype example of the second production Lamborghini SUV, the new Urus, last month, and it made a fairly positive impression on our own John Lieberman. Now the camo wrap is off and the details are coming into clearer focus. The pricing will start at about an even $200,000 with typically equipped examples trading in the $230k range into full-blown surpassed the Jones version topping at around $270,000, the related Bentley Bentayga's base price ranges from $197,725 to $300,725. Here's what else we learned. Taking a page from the Hurricane Hymnal in terms of personalization options, the years should be nearly as customizable as its Bentley cousin. Here's what you'll have to work with. 14 exterior colors, 15 interior leather colors plus 6 Alcantara colors. But note, the Alcantara can't be had with the 4-seat option or with ventilated seats. Contrast or tone-on-tone -tone stitching, hexagon quilting or ripped quilting of the seats. Dash door trim in piano black, carbon fiber or one of two open pore woods one with aluminum hexagon inserts and one with diagonal stripes. The latter being produced by pressing layers of wood together and shaving the veneer off on an angle. Headrests either embossed with a Raging Bull logo or embroidered with a Lamborghini wordmark. Wheels in. One of three sizes. 21 inch, 22 inch, and 23 inch, with two different 23 inch designs and a choice of polished, black, or titanium finishes for most. Exhaust tips in four finishes. Shiny chrome, black, brushed aluminum, and Zircatec gray. The exhaust sounds the same in every Eurus. The calipers are available in multiple colors, as well. In addition, most options are pretty free-flowing. For example, you can order the off-road package, fastages that improve the approach departure angle with wheels restricted to 21s or 22s, and or the driving mode selector with sand and gravel settings on most models. The 21-speaker bang and luffs in stereo with pop-up dash-mounted sound reflectors is optional but it is expected to have a very high take rate. Naturally there's a dual panel glass sunroof option, and folks looking for the ultimate in comfort can specify two rear bucket seats with a console. The seat frames are lifted from the Horekin, which is why they can't accommodate the three program massaging units available in the front. Heat and ventilation is standard all around on four seaters. Behind the rear seats is a commodious cargo area capable of swallowing 22.0 cubic feet in five passenger bench seat models and 20.2 cubic feet with the Horekin thrones. That's on the European DIN measuring system. Built-in aluminum tracks accommodate various tie-down hooks and cargo corralling belts and bars that Audi owners might recognize. There's also a rigid parcel shelf covered in standard Alcantara. Retractable roller ones were deemed too cheap looking. It can stow on the floor and helps attenuate noise, as do the double-glazed acoustic laminated freestanding front and rear side windows. The cockpit features all virtual instrumentation mostly designed in Lamborghini style with a central tech and digital speedo flanked by various customizable gauges and diagrams to either side, though a few of the text pages appear to crib Audi's font. The central high-resolution black glass panel touchscreen controls look very modern and could almost be from the same vendor as those in the recently launched Range Rover Velar. The shifter and controls for anima drive modes and for the ego, for tailoring your own drive mode by twiddling the diff locks, steering, and shocks, are pure Lambo and can't be confused for anything else except perhaps for ejecting jet fighter seats or lighting afterburners. Study the pictures, and decide how you like the exterior design. We're waiting to see one on the road because in indoor lighting it's just okay. Maybe it was a mistake to park so many LMO02s around it because that thing had a serious wow factor that this one somehow lacks. At least indoors. As for details. The low-profile wing above the rear glass is merely there to clean up airflow and reduce drag not for downforce. And the vents in the rear fascia are functional and relieve pressure from the rear wheel wells, but the front fender vents are falsies inspired by some on the Rambo Lambo. Oh well, it'll burn donuts around the LMO02, and at 190 mph it's reportedly the fastest SUV going. So maybe that's all that counts. Lamborghini effectively doubled its size in a year to make this vehicle happen building a new plant with 200,000 tons of concrete and 5,600 tons of steel. It features 23 workstations and 72 trolleys to carry the Arusas through the plant as 3,600 workers put them together. Now it's time to find out how big the market is for off-road supersports cars.